When did you actually start creating and putting stuff out for yourself? The best way to describe it is um, I didn't really start posting on the internet. Like I posted on like on message boards and stuff, but like my creator day really started um, in late 2006. You know, um, unfortunately I was diagnosed with, with Hodgkin's lymphoma in late 2006. And the best way to like keep people, like keep my friends like apprised of like my treatment and what was going on was to start a blog. And so at the time it was very easy to start a blog um, like on, on Google, it was just like blogger.com. And I had a blog spot address and I just called it, I couldn't really think of a name. So I was just like, this is about my life. And I was like, let's just call it, call it world of Isaac. And it was world of Isaac.blogspot.com. And I kept that from, I think late 2006. And then, you know, it was really just, Hey, I'm just telling my friends what's going on with treatment. Um, you know, with just like a, like, you know, humorous stories, whatever, like what happened in, in treatment, whatever. And then it kind of like at the end of, you know, I was, I was done with treatment like mid 2007 and I was like, all right, do I just quit this, this blog or do I just, I keep it running. And, you know, <laughs> at the time I was getting like my friends, like the, the comments under my blog were like, there was like several hundred comments and it wasn't just my friends anymore. It was like other people who had, who had found the blog. And so I started writing about other stuff. So it's weird. Cancer has really like impacted my life negatively, obviously. And, but I would say it also gave me my start uh, on the internet. So in, in that way, I guess I should be, I guess I should be thankful for, uh, uh, for cancer, for, for giving me my, I don't know if I would ever, I don't know if I would have ever gotten into the internet, um, maybe like down the line, but I got into the internet early on. You know, you have documented that your cancer fight openly online up until, yep. you know, current day, and you've had an army of people rooting for you, myself included, every step of the way. Has that, has that been therapeutic for you to kind of like give people updates and, and get that feedback? I would say it's, there are a lot of times where I think it was very helpful um, for me to write about and talk about having um, having cancer and just kind of like the treatment that I was going through up until I think even when I had a a stem cell transplant in, in 2009, I think probably it's been a little more difficult um, the last decade or so to update people because I think it's been a lot more complicated. And um, I think there are a lot more like questions. And, you know, I think a lot of people look at Hodgkin's lymphoma and they say, oh, that's a good cancer to have, right? Hodgkin's um, historically has been um, a high uh, cure rate, you know, 85, 90%. I just happen to be one of the unlucky people that, you know, did not get cured first time or or with second line treatment. And, you know, now I'm on like 30th line and line treatment. So it's, I think it's been a little more difficult the last few years to try to explain um, what I'm going through. And, you know, I think um, the stories aren't as positive um, the last like few years. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of ups and downs and there's a lot of treatment that looks positive and doesn't work. And, you know, I, I am generally a very positive person, so I don't think I wanted to kind of give people, hey, this is the the really shitty part of of having cancer for a really long time. And you know, um, I think one of the sad things for for me is a lot of the people, you know, I used to be in these cancer group chats, you know, speaking of like the internet, there were a lot of these like cancer message boards, um, especially like in the 2000s, late 2000s. 2010s, whatever. And, you know, you befriend a lot of like the other patients. And, you know, sadly, a lot of the people that were diagnosed at the same time as me or had disease at the same time as me have, have passed away. And it sucks, man. There's a lot of survivor's guilt um, involved in, you know, living just, you know, living for so long with the disease. And, you know, I'm lucky. I'm lucky in that I haven't run into 
a very, very serious issue. I've run into like, hey, I have a blood clot or hey, I got an infection. And, you know, that's how a lot of, um, a top, sadly, that's how a lot of cancer patients end up dying. They don't die from, from treatment, right? They die because they get pneumonia or, you know, like they get a blood clot and it just sucks. And, you know, like, it's hard for me. It's hard for me sometimes to to go back and, and think about all the all the friends that I've lost, um, you know, over the last 15, 16, 16 years. So, yeah, rest in peace to all of those all those people. Some of them were real warriors, man. They went through they went through a lot and were able to survive a lot and just unfortunate circumstances at the end. Yeah, that's incredibly unfortunate. I I imagine on the the flip side, there are people going through that now that maybe find some inspiration from your story. Do you hear from people like that? Oh yeah, I um, you know, just because I I think I've been so open, especially on Twitter, I can tell you that I get a lot of messages um, from patients, not just Hodgkin's patients, but other cancer patients on Twitter. I do my best. I I try to keep those pretty private. I do my best to try to like talk to people just about. You know, I, I think, Rye, when, when people have cancer, they just sometimes just want to talk about how angry they are or like they feel like they're, you know, been they have like this, this short stick in life and they just want somebody to listen to them. And, um, you know, I, I've been going to a cancer clinic for a really long time, this, the same one since, since my transplant in 2009. So I know a lot of the, you know, a lot of the patients in there and a lot of a lot of older cancer patients they're just they're miserable and you know sometimes they don't have the same support system and they just somebody they just want somebody to listen to them and um you know thankfully i have always one of my good qualities is i am a very good listener and i'm always willing to listen and i'm always willing to talk to any cancer patient that has difficulties or they just want to vent uh, about something. So, I mean, that, that's the good thing. I think as part of, um, you know, having a presence online is that, you know, some people feel like they, they can reach out to me and talk to me about anything. And I am, I am okay. And I am very like approachable, not only like online, but like in person too. 